you know, I had periods of my upbringing where um, we were on food stamps and government support. Um, so I did not come from money and I didn't graduate. I made it through four years of uni and I didn't, um, uh, I graduated fully in debt. So I graduated 40, negative 40,000 US. That was, that was me at age 20. Um, and so when I moved to Los Angeles, you know, I was paying rent, splitting a two bedroom with five guys <laughs> for like 800 a month in Nashville. Then I crashed on couches in New York for a year. Then I moved to, when I finally made it to LA and I was like 23, um, we had a one, two, three, three bedroom house. We had five guys in it. And on the third month that I was there, uh, sorry, the first month I was, I moved there on a MasterCard. Like I had zero cash, moved there on a MasterCard, went straight to um, Ikea, bought all my shit and then like put it in the house. The second month I was there, I had money coming from my first cut, my first song that anyone recorded. I had money that was, I knew was coming. It was like 7,000 from a Bubba Sparks like Timbaland record in 2005 or six. And, or yeah, 2000, no, 2000, oh my God, 2003, 2004. And long story short, uh, I was living on credit cards. I go to a grocery store, uh, Ralph's in my neighborhood. And they tell me like your cards, like you're gonna get an overdraft on this. I had 23 left on my credit. There's like, you're gonna get an overdraft. So then I went back, got 10 times the amount of groceries. I got enough food for like two months and it was like overdraft me. And then- oh, bring it. Yeah, I got three eviction notices. Um, I got my car uh, broke down after the first three months, uh, four months of being there, and um, I let it sit and get rained on, and 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 I parted it out. And I I lived in LA for two years, three years without a car. So yeah, I I remember those times. <laughs> I had to forget I was, that kind of thing. I would do anything. I mean, almost anything mm -hmm. for for rent, and that was that was a fun. I mean, you know what though? It was it was really fun. I, it was it was fun. stressful, but it was it's fun, and you got to go through that. Like you have to, and it means that when you're on the private jet that you're on now yes. on your Instagram, yes. you paid know for. that that's you did that. You paid did for, that. paid for, and that's the the reality is like, and I have friends. You know, I'm not I'm not shitting on people that are born into money because I have some good friends that were born into money and they're good people. I also yeah. know a handful that are terrible people. Um, so, you know, your parents really dictate and your own choices dictate who you are. And Amen. ultimately money or without money, um, you are who you are. So money only amplifies what you are. That's, Ain't that the yeah. truth? Just makes it more obvious. Is there more yep. turbulence on it? Cause I'm not a great flyer. I fly a lot, but I hate it. Um, yeah. Is there more turbulence on a private jet because it's smaller yeah. and it gets thrown? Okay. For sure. For sure there is. Um, so the way to think about that and the private jet of it all within music, people always associate private jets with um, with rock stars and, and musicians and whatever. And they're always like, oh, it's so it's like, how can you justify these expenditures? And the thing that I should t tell everybody about is once you reach a certain level within the music industry, um, you get offers all the time to play private shows, right? DJs are the kings of private jets, right? Diplo texted me this morning, like, you know, is there a jet available da, 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 for, you know, a week from now? And uh, a lot of my friends, you know, hit me about that stuff. Uh, what happens is you start playing enough gigs and the gigs, the only way you can get from that, you can like get from one gig to another within the, the contract period is to take a private plane. And first time I did it, I was scared out of my mind. And it was like, I think it was like Walmart or some company that flew us across country to do a show. Scared out of my mind, but then I was like, well, that's the coolest shit ever. Let's do that again. <laughs> so we started booking it. And what happens is uh, concert promoters and people that pay you to do shows, they'll put a budget for travel in your overall offer. And very, very often that budget is like, it's abnormally high for some reason. Yeah. And so you run the numbers and you go, well, we could go wait at security at the airport for three hours and blah, 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 blah. Or we could just spend all that on one plane. And so that's what we do. Spend it on my plane. Spend it yeah. on my plane. But it's turbulent. It's turbulent. It is more. The thing is, planes are like boats and the air is like the ocean. And so pilots will tell you this. Planes do not go down from turbulence. Like it almost has never happened. But passengers don't know that. So to this day, if I hit turbulence and I've flown in a busy year, I'll do 400,000 miles. I don't know how many kilometers that is, but it's a lot. Like a million. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, yeah, probably, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and I have had two or three close, the, the most near-death experiences I've had though were, were in commercial planes. Um, 
we had a couple. Anyway, let's not get up on that. That's a terrible topic. No, it's not. But I love that you share that because most artists don't want to talk about like the realities of like, that's what people want to know. I'm, I'm, most if you want to know, it's what I, you want to know is that 90, I'll say this, 90% of the time when you see, and you see like Geta and, you know, or if you see me, like that plane is someone else is paying for that. Yeah. Like it's not, it, nine, nine out of 10 times, it is not the artist that's just like, I'm going to blow through. Now listen, yeah. I do know those artists. I know a lot of them that just have no concept what planes cost. And they just tell their business manager, book me a, a G5 or a G whatever. And those, a lot of, a lot of them, the stories about like artists going broke or bankrupt. Yeah. A lot of it, a lot of them is because of private travel. They just yeah. get bougie with it and they, 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 <laughs> yeah. they blow through their cash and that's like a cautionary tale. I love that. Before I let you go, I'm going to, I need to tell you a great story that involves you. So, and I remembered it this morning. A couple of years ago, before I had this show, I was in London, right? I'd gone over yeah. and I wanted to move to London. And um, I was there for a couple months, hustling, hustling, hustling. And I got on a train. I had to get off a of Piccadilly, right? Because I, I had this appointment. Yeah. It was with a radio station in London. And I'm there and I'm like about, about to run out of cash. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, I'm a long way from home and I'm worried. And I have my headphones on on Spotify, but then you go under the tunnel and then Lose there's it. no more reception. But then after yeah. three minutes of silence, I'm like, oh, I don't mind. So you just sit there in silence. And then randomly a song comes on that isn't on my playlist. So I don't really know what it is or why it's playing in my ears in the London subway. And it's good life. And it's a song mm. that's talking about, you know, on my way to the city near Piccadilly. Yeah, London, Piccadilly. Really yeah. Sure how I go. And then the chorus hits of this is going to be a good life. And then I start crying because I'm like, the universe is for me. My life <laughs> is going to shit. And then yeah. literally two months later, like Ash Sunday Live was born. I met my husband. We're having a <laughs> baby. Wow. And Congrats. Like, and that when I often think the universe speaking to me through song, I always tell that story. So in a roundabout wow. way, you made me feel like life wasn't going to shit. So thank you. Ryan. You know, it's funny. <laughs> Thanks for, that's an amazing story. I'm so happy to hear that. And that what's crazy about that song and its origination, it was the last song we did on the second album. And um, I, I had gone to London to record strings for the album. And I was at Abbey Road Studios mm. with Will Malone, who did like, well, I'm not going to go. He did his credits are ridiculous. Anyway, we're, we're recording a full orchestra where the Beatles did all their Beatles shit. And we're there and it's paid for the first album. We had had apologize and stop and stare. So we had done well. We had this crazy budget from Interscope. They flew me to London first class. Like we're there. And I, ha and I broke down crying in the studio as the strings are recording because I remembered that five years less than, oh my God, three years previously, I couldn't pay rent. I was 40,000 in debt. I like was like my dream. I was dropped by Columbia records and I was like, I'm 25 and I suck. And like, and I was, it's too late for me. Right. Cut to three years later, the album comes out, apologize, all that. So I'm sitting here thinking of all this in London and I, I'm like, start crying, whatever. And then that night, I had done a, written a single that became a hit for Natasha Bedingfield, and she was in London. We met up that night um, with some friends, uh, other writers and whatever, and she like had taken, I, I had, we hadn't traded, we hadn't exchanged like numbers or somebody, she was with her brother or somebody was like, give me your phone, put, and like put his number and somebody else's number on my phone. So the whole song, the verse, woke up with numbers that I don't like, there's numbers on my phone that I don't even, people I don't even know. Um, trained to pick a dilly, like all of it is literally linear thought, what actually happened within a 40 hour, 48 hour window in London. And I'm listing all this random stuff and you're like, what is he talking about? And then it all hit me. I was like, I think this is gonna be a good life. Like here I am in London, you know, <laughs> all this stuff working out and like, holy shit. Like, and that's really what it is. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love that story yeah. so much. And it's such a perfect reflection of my own reality. And that's why I love music yeah. because it does that. Yeah. It brings us together. It does that. Makes us feel like, you know, there's some purpose in it all. Ryan Tedder, I love you so much. And it is always such a pleasure having you on this show. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your gift. We love you. Say hi to the boys from us and hopefully we'll do. in the next 
decade, we'll bloody well see you here soon. We'll we're going to see you in twenty um, in twenty twenty two. We're already right. we're already we're already drafting tour schedules. It's happening. So I'll we'll, be there. We're I'll be see there you. with a the sign, yeah. Eddie. Take yeah. care. All right. Thank you.